So <laughs> how you got started uh, photography business? Uh, was it first uh, your hobby? Well, it was a hobby at first. Um, I was raised in New Jersey and I was in a family that was very active outdoors. And my dad happened to be a photographer, not full time, just as a hobbyist. Mm -hmm. And so as I was growing up, I would watch him make pictures. And as often happens, kids mimic their parents. And so he gave me a Brownie camera and then an Instamatic and all these little cameras that meant I could go around and I could make pictures too. And it was something that we really shared. And uh -huh. it just from that, it grew into my own hobby. And in fact, <clears throat> I learned how to develop film in my uh, own in my father's house because so how long i mean uh how old were you at that time the, um, when you first I to touch think, the camera oh when i first touched cameras i was probably seven or eight years old oh really that's pretty yeah. young a long time ago <laughs> yeah <laughs> is that uh, the camera that you own or the that camera you just kind of uh uh sneak it in and uh <laughs> no it was my own yeah oh really he, he wow want, you had your own camera at the me. age of seven yes but it was you know it was a brownie camera i mean and then instamatics and they uh -huh. were inexpensive and right. dad's big camera you know, was an Argus C35 millimeter and nobody was touching that. So oh, yeah, to keep right. me happy. So did you say happy. your dad was a professional photographer? No, no, no. He was a mechanical engineer. He just oh. loved photography as a oh, hobby. But he was an enthusiastic uh, Very much so. Yeah. 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 I see. So did, uh, did your dad actually... Uh, teach you some basic skills of how to operate it and stuff? Well, I don't remember him teaching me how to operate the cameras, but he probably did, but mostly a brownie. You just pointed, you press the button and then you wound the crank. Yeah, you right. Know? So there wasn't much to it. Um, as I remember, you didn't even, I don't know if it even had settings, but somehow he must have taught me some of the basic settings. Yeah, but you had to at least I, uh, you had to load your film in it, right? <laughs> well, he taught me all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's just I was, and it, I probably those are the things you don't remember. I probably had to go to him to get help with the film initially, but those film, those the the film was you know pretty self-explanatory it was on one spool and you just had to put the leader yeah, over right. and feed it yeah. in a slot and wind it and there you go yeah so, i remember that so uh, when did you actually got serious about taking pictures and start uh like uh taking courses maybe and you you got i was, your step I was on in high school field. High school? Yeah, okay. high school. Um, the passion for photography was really strong for me. And I started taking some courses that were offered in the community. Um, they were, uh, I think I was probably in my junior and senior year when I did these classes, but they were community education classes. And my dad actually took a few of them with me. So we shared that you know, bond of being able to take some of these classes as well. And um, the only problem was dad never considered this as a possible career. Uh -huh. In his thinking, you were to get a good college degree so you could get a good job. Right. Even if I was to get married and have children, I would be able to go back to work and have a really good job because I had a degree. So photography as a career was the farthest thing from his mind and therefore from mine. So I just kept pursuing it as a hobby and I started having shows, local shows of my work. I'd, I'd have an exhibit in the nature center nearby and I'd enter some local contests and you know, see how that went. And all those were good things, and they uh -huh. kept me. They kept a, me with a purpose for my photography, and out sort of a uh, an outlet for it. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Then it how you got until, how you got uh, like uh, actually uh, start teaching people and uh, well taking it, more serious pictures. 
it's funny you ask that because I went on and I got my degree in computer science and I was working for Hewlett Packard back in the day. And there were, I, I had an opportunity to have a show on one of the halls, the, the walls in the hallway. And after that, people came to me and said, we want to form a club and we want you to teach us photography. So my very first teaching gig was free. I didn't get paid, but right. <laughs> I got the chance to practice how to teach people. And they learned over the course of about six months, they learned so much from me. And we met like twice a month. So you know, they were all our Hewlett Packard employees? Yeah, yeah. So, and then we had a show of everybody's work and it was really well received and it was a lot of fun. And so at that point, I realized that I liked to teach. So I had this opportunity, but again, it was just on the side because I was uh -huh. still working full time. But every time something went wrong at work, I threatened to leave and become a photographer. And I remember I saying that to a lot of people. Oh, uh -huh. you know, I just had a bad day. I'm going to quit and be a photographer. And one day I thought, you've been saying this for a while. Why don't you just do it? And so I finally made the decision that I was going to quit my job uh -huh. and go full time into photography. Wow. What year was that? That was a uh, night. Uh -huh, let's see. 1984. Oh, so uh, so you had about almost a 40 years of a photography career then. Yeah, absolutely have. Yeah. And you know, and it was a big it was a big leap of faith because right. I didn't really know anything about the business of photography. I just knew that I loved making photographs and I liked to teach people and I liked showing my work. But right. when it came to making money, that was a whole different story. So there was a, a steep learning curve as I found myself unemployed and trying to figure out how my dream was going to be a reality and pay the bills. <laughs> yeah, that must have been a really hard time, tough time. Well, it was challenging, definitely. Yeah, I think there's sure. easier ways to do it than the way I did it. But, you know, I I think knowing my personality, I had to take that leap of faith because I my father always dreamt of doing other things but never took the risk. And I didn't want that to happen to me. I uh -huh. wanted to not look back and have a regret that I had you know, never pursued photography in my dream. So, but the only way to do it was really just to jump off the deep end and figure it out as I went. So, you yeah, know, maybe and, if I had uh, stayed working. I'm sure there are a lot of people uh, who are thinking about what you thought about 40 years ago, you know, like uh, uh, knowing that their passion is uh, on photography, but they have a day job. And someday they, they all thinking about, you know, like someday I'm going to have to leave this and follow my passion, but I'm just so afraid to do that. And yeah. then they probably uh, want to hear from someone who did that and actually did it successfully like you yourself. So uh, do you have anything to say for those people, you know, maybe like a little mm -hmm. advice so that they can kind of uh, consider, you know, switching to um, their real passion, you know, pursuing sure. photography? I think the biggest piece of advice that I can give anyone is that if you want to succeed in the business of photography, you really need to come to it with a good sense of business and a sense of marketing. Because these days, it is even, so, it's so much more competitive because everyone with a camera can make a pretty decent photograph. And there is such a huge amount of photography out on the internet for the world to see and sift through that you have to find a way to stand out. And if you like to do the kind of photography that I like to do, which is what a lot of other people like to do, then you're not really going to stand out that much unless you put your mind to figuring out ways to market yourself. 
So really study on marketing and business approaches um, in, before you really take that risk and make that leap. Right. Yeah. And also, uh, this is just my thought, but maybe uh, taking workshops of uh, uh, one of those well-known photographers might be actually good, nice first step because then mm -hmm. you get to know not only the skill sets, but actually you get to hear more about their personal side of the business and photography, like, uh, you know, uh, maybe they can, you know, learn something, uh, little tips here and there, you know, more informal way. Uh, yeah. So uh, actually, I think that's probably another reason you have to take uh, uh, well-organized uh, workshops given by, you know, um, established uh, photographers so that yes. you can, uh, you know, follow their footsteps and maybe, uh, uh, you know, shorten the learning curve by themselves. Yeah, because yeah. You, can, you can learn a lot and you also get a sense when the feedback from the photographer leading a workshop um, the feedback on your own work is really valuable. And they may not always agree with what you've done or how you've chosen to compose something, but you can still get an overall sense of what works and what doesn't work when right. it comes to building your composition skills and seeing the potential in a, you know, in a photographic situation and how to, like what I teach a lot is how to find your own creative vision and, and personal expression, rather uh -huh. than just copying the same iconic photo that everyone else has right. to, to actually be able to make it yours, make it different. An example is the picture that's on the screen. Everybody goes and photographs this beautiful chapel on the hill in Slovenia. And of course, I'm going to bring everyone there on a workshop because it's an absolutely stunning place if the morning fog comes in like it did here. And I've seen so many pictures of this, but I have seen fewer panoramas. And so when I went after the first year, the second year, I thought, what can I do that's different? And so I decided that I would make a panorama of it. And I'm sure it's not the only one out there, but it's just thinking about how you might do something a little different with the scene that's in front of you so that you're not just copying everyone else's work. Right. Yeah, that's just a so serene and beautiful. When, when once the, the right uh, when, when was the uh, time of the day when you took that picture? It was sunrise or pre-sunrise, and yeah, it looks it's like also it. autumn. Yeah, and if right. you go in autumn, which is what I like to do, you get those atmospheric changes. You get weather conditions of rain and snow, but you also get fog that comes in and sits in the valleys and presents a beautiful atmospheric condition. Right. So did you say you have already scheduled for uh, for the Slovenia's uh, uh, photo trip? Yes, I have one scheduled for this coming October. It's the 14th through the 23rd of October. Mm -hmm. And we still have some space on it. You know, people where fingers crossed that everyone will be vaccinated and ready to travel. And, yeah. and I'm seeing a pickup already in a lot of interest in my workshops that I have scheduled in the fall. And also in the coming year, I've got more that are being scheduled. I've got one scheduled right now that was a postponement from this year's Namibia trip in July, August. We're now going June into early July of 2022. Right. So that's going to be exciting as well. So this particular trip, um, do you have a certain uh, group size that you try to maintain? Yeah, I don't take more than 10 people with me. Uh -huh. And if I have 10 people, quite often it's two leaders so that everyone can really get some good one-on-one -on -one time. And my partner, Jed Manwaring, is one of the leaders that I work with. 
on most of the trips. And then I have a very good friend and professional photographer who introduced me to Namibia. And so I've done the Namibia trips with her, Wendy Caveney. And um, it's just been terrific, especially in Namibia, because you're in two separate vehicles so that when it comes to wildlife viewing, you've got some space. And if you've got two vehicles and only one leader, then even if the leader rotates, that other vehicle always feels sort of left out in the moment. And you want to have somebody there to answer setting questions and help with camera malfunctions or whatever might be going on right. in the moment. So I feel that that two leaders is really good you know, when it comes up to 10 people. Right. Okay. So um, do you have some more pictures that you can share today right now? I do. I'll okay. run through them fairly quickly. This is also Slovenia, Lake Bled. And every time I've gone, these three pictures wow. or two pictures show a different condition and you just never know what you're going to get. Some days you get, some years you get beautiful sunrises and other years you don't. And then you've got beautiful weather in the mountains. Uh, you get up into these really high passes and you drive up there, which is amazing. So you don't have to do an hours long hike. Right. And it provides you with vistas like this, that when the peak autumn color is there and then you have atmospheric conditions, it's just really, really stunning. And Slovenia is a, a tiny country and it is packed with pictures around every single bend in the road it, and down the trails to waterfalls. It's just amazing. And then Namibia has become another favorite place for me because of the variety. There's wildlife opportunities there that are really unusual, unique. It's not Tanzania and Kenya. It's, it's really arid desert and the hardships of life are really uh, strong and you get some incredible wildlife opportunities. There's abandoned towns that have weathered buildings like this that you can photograph in. And we spent quality time in each of these areas because my trip to Namibia is typically 17 to 19 days. Uh -huh. So it's a long journey, but it's, you know, you've got drive time in between places and you want to be able to spend good time in each of these areas so that you can concentrate on making some of your best work. Right. So I threw those Namibia sort of into the middle of what I had already put together for Slovenia. So now we're back in the mountains of Slovenia. Okay, <laughs> that's fine, just, yeah. Yeah, shows you the variety of things. And right. I'm one of these people, I love the landscape uh -huh. and nature. I love wildlife, but I also really enjoy tr just general travel photography too. So when we do the Slovenia trip, we also go in, here's a variation on that same theme from earlier that you saw. We also go in and we spend some time when we arrive in the city, capital city of Ljubljana, and we also go to a coastal uh, town and we spend some time doing creative photography in the buildings and outside on the streets of both of those areas. So working with the blue hour in pre-dawn or post sunset light, it can be really fun. Yeah, so we they just are have all a great so time. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And and Slovenia is old world. It feels very old world, even though they're up to speed with Wi-Fi and all the technology. Yeah. It's still really a traditional, uh, the villages are traditional, the cities got have old and new sections, and the old sections feel really wonderful. So it's just really terrific. I think that's the last one in the mix here. I think that's the last one. That was a surprise snowstorm that we had when we were up on the mountain pass photographing fall color. I and see. I love going in autumn because you have that potential for the change of seasons happening. And it was just magical. And the, and the guide was just going ballistic. He was so excited because he said, this is such an unusual opportunity. So he wanted to make sure everybody knew that this was special to get out there and work it as much as we could before it melted. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they are so beautiful.
To find Brenda's photography workshops, go to the directory for photography.com. Directory number four photography.com. And here is directory for photography.com, International Directory of Photography Workshops and Showcase. And go down a little bit. And here are 10 postings, recently posted photography events. And the first listing here is uh, Slovenia in Autumn by Brenda Thop. There's another one, Wild Namibia, hosted by Brenda Thop Photography. Another one, Death Valley Refining Personal Vision. Okay, so let's go to Slovenia in autumn. More info. Slovenia in autumn. And to get more info, click on the website link then you'll be directed to Brenda's own website, Slovenia in Autumn. Here you can sign up for her workshop. Okay, let's see the other one, Wild Namibia. Starting in June 2022, more info. Wild Namibia. July 18 through July 6, 2022. To get more info, click here. And now you see Brenda's own website where you get all the details about this Namibia workshop. And this is where you can sign up for this workshop in Africa. Okay, that's all for today. And thank you again for watching and see you soon.